Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I'm actually filming from Grand Rapids, Michigan this week, and I wanted to get it filmed on Wednesday night because I'm going to be traveling a bit on Thursday and didn't want to take the risk of anything going wrong and keeping me from being able to get it taped. Um, I'm actually going to focus our video comments here this week on one particular topic, and that is the collapse in oil prices that have taken place over the last week, week and a half. Um, the written Dividend Cafe at DividendCafe.com is going to cover a lot of other topics. I've uh, been writing it all week, and there's really a lot of great material in there. I really like this week's issue, so I want to direct you to DividendCafe.com, Dividend Cafe, for the uh, broader array of coverage of various timely investment topics. But as far as the comments I want to make right now, um, Really, a uh, sudden movement down. Uh, oil prices are still dramatically higher than where they were a year and a half ago um, in the face of kind of global deflationary fears and recessionary fears that uh, demand may be weakening so much combined with um, incredible supplies that have pushed oil down into the mid-20s. Um, it moved about 100% off of that level of, over the course of a year, uh, getting above $50 a barrel. And then in recent weeks here has now moved down to the 42, 43 range that we saw here today. So you've definitely seen a pretty quick move down from what's called it the low 50s to the low to mid 40s. Um, there isn't an iota of data that is suggesting this movement is demand related. Um, fundamentally, it does tend to put a monkey wrench in the views of those who believe inflation is picking up. Um, it, it, uh, at very worst, um, excuse me, at very least, could represent a pause for monetary policymakers that have seen some signs of an inflation acceleration and that very likely gets contradicted. What is really interesting is that oil has moved down without the dollar rallying very dramatically. There's normally an inverse relationship between the dollar and oil. Um, our posture about this from an investment standpoint is very, very simple. We want no exposure um, and no real and sustainable risk around the price of any particular commodity, let alone the short-term movement of an incredibly volatile uh, and globally denominated, globally used commodity. So to the extent that oil prices are at 40, to the extent they're at 60, doesn't mean a whole lot to us. If oil prices were to go to 20, it very likely were, would mean that we were in some form of global recession. So at that point, the oil prices wouldn't be anything that would be bothering us. It would just simply be that it was indicative of a very poor macro environment all around. But what you have here is a lot of traders, a lot of speculators involved in a market that uh, can whipsaw rapidly. So we have no interest in taking direct exposure. Uh, you will have stocks, the integrated oil companies that are involved in downstream, midstream, and upstream activity. Uh, famous ones include Chevron and ExxonMobil. You'll have stocks like this that are somewhat correlated in the short term to the price of oil. Um, you'll have some of the pipeline companies, um, some of the oil services companies that will get caught up into it to some degree. But these are operating entities. They have the ability to, to modify costs. They have the ability to, on a management level, make strategic decisions for the betterment of their operations and, of course, their shareholders. Some of the companies that we own in this space, we think, do it masterfully well. Um, I do believe frankly, that it would be best for uh, our clients if oil prices were to stay lower and these oil and energy related stocks were to stay lower as we are big reinvestors of the dividends that they pay out. And we're buyers. We're constantly buying more securities, at least, uh, you know, in a macro sense across the capital that we manage over a billion dollars of money we're responsible for. I would love to see this uh, drop sustain. That may not be the way you're thinking because you may view some of the stock prices that are down a little bit even with everything else doing so well. You may see a couple of these names are down and you want to see them increase right away. But there, there's something quite counterintuitive about that if you think about it. Logically speaking, the only time you should really want your stock prices to be at very high levels are when you're about to sell them. 
to me, I think that we're getting a little opportunity here to pick up more shares at lower prices um, where the business model is not remotely threatened. So we are buyers of energy at this point, whether it be pipelines or some of the aforementioned types of companies. And if this were to continue, we could actually see ourselves coming back into the upstream space for the first time in quite a while, meaning actually taking direct exposure to some of the E&P companies, exploration and production. Right now, we have a much more conservative posture. We're more limited in the integrateds and in the pipelines, which are pure midstream plays on energy, oil, and natural gas. But if we could get a little lower pricing, we would find a lot of attractive scenarios around the upstream space. So that's the way we're approaching it. If you have any questions, please reach out. And as I said, please check out DividendCafe.com on Friday for a much more holistic view of the markets, everything going on investment-wise. We're running like crazy right now. A lot of things happening in our portfolio management. This is a really fun time to be an investment advisor. Uh, we sure hope you're having fun being a client of the Bonson Group. Reach out anytime. Thanks so much.